Thank you very much, Your Majesty, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and great thanks to the panelists for starting this day off so uh, interestingly, and also uh, thanks for the, to the organizers for this wonderful event, which is really a world-class event on water. I'm also very glad to meet uh, uh, Cecilia Martinson, my own recruitment. Uh, I'm going to tell Ban Ki-moon when I get back to New York that I finally met a woman Secretary General. <laughs> I want to start by raising this glass of um, tap water from this former schoolhouse and uh, remind you that this for you in Sweden, for us in Sweden, is a clear, safe, abundant resource and that we have the privilege of having quality water from the tap. And I want to tell you from having traveled the world and many of the trouble spots in the world that this is an absolute luxury, an absolute dream for millions and millions of people around the world, while we take it for granted. And uh, therefore, I, I think we should keep this in mind, that this is a challenge. This abundant resource, which isn't as abundant as we may believe, as we have heard this morning, is something that we have an obligation political, social, economic, moral obligation to make this possible for all people in the world. And that is, in fact, now laid down in a document which was adopted in the UN in September, namely the new Sustainable Development Agenda, where we have now a specific goal, number six, on water, that we have to achieve within the next 15 years. So it's a huge challenge that I hope that all of you accept. Four years ago, uh, the UN announced that the world had met its Millennium Development Goal target of bringing to half uh, the proportion of people without sustainable access to improved sources of drinking water. This was, in fact, a great achievement. Many, many of the world's poorest and most vulnerable people now have better prospects of health and well-being. And this shows that when we set out specific and decide on specific targets and assemble effective partnerships, we can indeed reach significant results. But this class of clean water is still out of reach for 1.8 billion people in the world who drink contaminated water. Some 2.5 billion people, a third of the global population, live without adequate sanitation toilets. We need urgent action to secure clean water for a safer and healthier world. Climate change, growing populations and evolving lifestyles are placing ever-increasing pressures on scarce water supplies. Agriculture alone accounts for 70% of our water use. And the water that agriculture uses is not producing hydroenergy and is not used for industry washing, drinking, or sanitation. Water is becoming an increasingly scarce and expensive resource, especially for the poor, the marginalized, and the vulnerable. In fact, you can, on the street or the slums of Africa, have to pay more for fresh water than you do in a city of Sweden. Much of the water is also seriously polluted. In the developing world, roughly 90% of sewage is discharged untreated into water bodies, lakes and rivers. And industrial activities release between 300 and 400 million tons of heavy metals, solvents, toxic and other waste into lakes and rivers each year. How we manage water has, as we all understand, serious implications for public health, food and energy, security, economic development, and even political stability in today's world. 
we have to make sure that water is a source of cooperation and not a source of conflict. Put simply, uh, mismanaging water and sanitation is a threat to achieving the uh, Sustainable Development Goals with negative effects on peace, development and human rights. Reversely, managing it right brings great benefits in all aspects. The goal number six that I just mentioned aims to ensure by 2030 the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. One of the targets uh, of, under this goal relates to the theme of this symposium. It calls on us to reduce pollution, eliminate dumping, minimize the release of hazardous chemicals and materials, as well as reduce the proportion of untreated wastewater and increase recycling. To achieve this goal, we must expand international cooperation and capacity building in support of developing countries. In particular, we must strengthen the participation of local communities. We have to see results in the field. I'm glad we have Dr. Rose's detectives around the world making sure that they act up. Uh, and we must mobilize finance and enhancing technology transfer on a larger scale. Efforts to prevent pollution will enable us to reduce costs, operate more economically and minimize health risks. Investing in water and sanitation will translate into improved public health and food security, into poverty reduction and economic growth, into livable cities and energy for all, as well as into environmental protection and climate action. We, and I look around this room, you in this room, have the know-how, the innovative technologies and the skills to improve and preserve water quality. What is urgently needed is the will to decide on and implement worldwide programs for cleaner water. There is enough water to meet the world's growing needs, but we have to change how water is used, managed and shared. Water is polluted and wastefully used by all sectors in all countries, often to a shocking extent, I must say. All sectors must work together for responsible and sustainable solutions, whether it is governments, international organizations, parliaments, civil society, the business sector, the philanthropic and scientific community. Everybody, everybody has a role to play. I say, nobody can do everything, but everybody can do something. The challenges are daunting. You may think your contribution is just a drop in the ocean, but as they say, every drop counts. Thank you very much.